to Self Care Sunday. My name is Alexa Hanshaw for those of you that are new and I am a functional health and nutrition coach and I empower women to push past the confusion of the health and wellness industry to really create lifestyle habits that really bring them energy and help work with their bodies instead of against it. And in today's self-care Sunday, we are going to be talking all about creating the perfect smoothie. And really what I mean about that is not a specific this ingredient, this ingredient, this ingredient smoothie, but really how to build a nutrient dense smoothie based on your specific taste, what you have in the fridge, and really making sure that you are staying full and happy for hours to come after eating your smoothie. So go ahead and let me know in the comments if you are watching this hashtag live or hashtag replay and let me know what your favorite smoothie is. Do you have a specific ingredient that you love, a specific taste that you love? And while we're getting into that, I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. So the basis of a nutrient dense smoothie is making sure that you have the right type of ingredients. So what I mean by that, you want to make sure you have a liquid, you want to make sure you have some greens in there or some type of veggies, you want to make sure you've got protein to keep you full, you want to make sure you've got a nice fat source, so ideally something with some omega-3s, which not only will help you stay full for longer, but also has that nutrient um, burst of, of the healthy fats. And then also rounding out with something frozen, whether it's frozen fruit or ice, to really make it that smoothie texture compared to more of a juice. So with that, I have a few of my ingredients, a few of my favorite ingredients here, um, but I'm going to talk through about how much you should use. And again, as you're watching, definitely let me know what your favorites are of each of these. So first and foremost, so important, you know, make sure you have something to create your smoothie. So I have a Nutribullet here, anything like a um, quick and easy blender is perfect. I love the Nutribullet and um, the Magic Bullet just because it's super easy. You click a, you click a button or twist and it um, blends for you, but anything will work as long as it's got the blades to blend. So first and foremost, I love to use some type of unsweetened um, milk. So whether that is a dairy milk, if you like to use dairy, um, we usually use oat milk or coconut milk in, in my household. And um, another great option for a liquid is also a green juice. So with the green juice, you just want to make sure you don't have a whole bunch of um, sugars in it. But um, this can also be another great liquid base to start with. And again, as I'm pouring this in, go ahead and let me know in the comments what is your favorite liquid to use when you're creating a smoothie if you've done one in the past. And I usually like to do about eight ounces. For me, I have actually marked off what eight ounces is in here, so I don't have to necessarily um, measure exactly what it looks like, but you're looking for around eight ounces of liquid. And after you add in your liquid, I love to move on to protein source. So for me, I usually choose a powdered protein that is plant-based. And again, as always, super important to look at the ingredients, see what's in there, see if there is um, about how much protein is in there. I like to choose something that has about 20 um, but really anywhere 15 to 25 is probably a good place to start. Um, and then you also have whey-based proteins as well, again, if dairy doesn't bother you. And then from there, you know, these are easy. They usually have the right amount of um, the, the measuring in there for you. But I like to add in just about a scoop, again, to get your 15 to 20 grams of protein, super easy. 
And then once I have my protein in there, I am moving on to the greens so or, or the veggies. So this is where you have so many options with the veggies. So I love to use a grain powder because you can get such great nutrient density in one little teaspoon or, again, I'm not really big on measuring, but I just use a little bit of a spoon and spoon it in. Um, a few of my other favorites are going to be organic spinach. So if you're using spinach, go ahead and just take like a handful or two and place it into um, your cup. And again, the spinach, although it seems weird to add in, I promise, as long as you've got great other ingredients and, and really good, um, and you've got some good fruit in there, the fruit is gonna cover that spinach flavor. You're not even gonna know that you're getting all of that delicious spinach in there. And then another kind of secret ingredient is zucchini. So the only thing we had in the house right now is um, zucchini spirals, but even a full zucchini, if you chop it up into little blocks, it actually creates a really good texture and a smoothie. And again, with your other ingredients in there, you're not even gonna taste it. So it's a great way to really sneak in some good nutrients. So for me, while I am making mine, I'm gonna add in the green powder, but again, the, actually, I'm gonna do a little bit of green powder and a little bit of spinach because why not? You can't taste it. Might as well get a little bit of extra fiber in there, a little bit of extra nutrients. So since I already have green powder, I'm gonna do just about a half of a um, handful in there and we're good to go. Um, let me know in the comments, what is your favorite um, greens to add into a smoothie if you've done it before and if not just let me know what's your favorite veggies and I'll let you know um, how it can work into a, a smoothie. So after you add in your greens this is where we move into our healthy fat sources. So what I'm talking about healthy fat sources we are looking for unsaturated fats. So some of my favorites that are easy are going to be your chia seeds so super easy, you can get in any grocery store. Um, these happen to be black chia seeds. They also make white chia seeds and a couple different ones. Um, again, just they are good for fiber, so to help keep you full. They also have the good healthy omega-3s in there. Another super easy um, fat to use is gonna be a flax seed. So again, this is ground, so it makes it much easier to kind of blend and throw straight in. Um, but you can also get kind of full flax seeds if you're gonna use them in, in other sources as well and um, use them in there. And then another one that tends to give a lot of good texture is some type of nut butter. So in, and I have it upside down because that's how I store it, but <laughs> um, for the nut butter, we tend to use sunflower butter in my household because my um, husband has a nut allergy, but any type of nut butter you could put in here and it would be a great addition for texture as well as a little extra protein and then those healthy fats as well. And for me, uh, oh, another another great one, which I don't have right now because I haven't gone grocery shopping yet for the week, but um, avocado is actually another great addition and adds a really good creamy texture to your smoothies. So if you're someone that likes more of that milkshake feel in your smoothies, avocado and the zucchini might be a really good um, option for you to try and see if you can get that texture of a milkshake. And for me, I usually like to add in a, just a little bit of flaxseed just because it has that great omega-3 in it. Um, you can see based on the one that you get, it's got your um, serving sizes in here. Now for me, I normally use about a half a serving of um, flaxseed and then either a half a serving of nut butter or half a serving of avocado. And that is just because I like the combination, but you could very easily use just one as well. So after we add in our fat, we have the final step, which is adding in the fruit and whatever your frozen item is. So. Got stuff on my hands. <laughs> so for me, 
the frozen item that I typically choose to use is a frozen fruit. So if you're not choosing a frozen fruit, if you're going to use um, ice cubes instead, then you'll also want to put some type of regular fruit, um, non-frozen fruit, into your smoothie. So I kind of have both of those here. We have fresh blueberries that we went, um, we actually went, we did blueberry picking last weekend. So I am going to use some of these. You wanna make sure that they are rinsed if they're not rinsed yet. And I, when I'm using fresh fruit, I just typically like to do about a serving. And for me, that's usually about a handful or so, kind of throwing them in. And then you wanna make sure you have about a cup of something frozen. So again, whether you are using fruit that's frozen, um, I love to use berries, any type of berry, strawberry, blueberry, raspberry, blackberry, etc. cetera. Um, it just has such great antioxidants in it that it is a really great addition. And because it has the pretty strong flavor, it can cut any of that green taste that you might get from any of the veggies or the green powder or anything that you put in. Um, so because I already have blueberries in there, I'm probably only going to use like two or three, um, actually five <laughs> strawberries went in there. So I'm going to use five strawberries and I'm going to blend it up, kind of see how it goes. And then I might end up adding um, a, a few more um, ice cubes just to get it to the texture that I want. But we'll kind of, I'll see how that goes afterwards. Um, but just to kind of recap before I do the actual blend, we've got about eight ounces of liquid. So anything, some type of milk, if you're using a juice, just be mindful of the type of sugar that's in it and how much sugar is in it. Then you've got your protein powder, which is really gonna keep you full. It's giving you that um, protein that we should be getting in most meals. And then you've got your fat source, which is, in my case, I've got my flax seeds and I've got my sunflower butter. And then your greens, so green powder, zucchini, um, spinach, even broccoli is great to add in. Um, cauliflower also gives it a pretty good texture as well. And your greens are also another way to get in um, some of your frozen uh, some of your frozen options as well. So if you are using a frozen vegetable, then you'll want that to be the last thing that goes in. Um, and then making sure you also add in some of your fruits to cut out some of that green flavor or some of that veggie flavor. And as always, or as I mentioned, you wanna make sure you have your frozen items on the top because when you flip it over to actually blend it, that's gonna be the first thing that's in the blender. And you wanna make sure that that's what's getting blended up and kind of mixed in throughout the rest. So let me know in the comments, what is your favorite fruit to either make a smoothie with or something that you might try to make a smoothie with? And um, I am going to spin this up after I get off because I don't want you guys to hear that crazy noise. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me for this self-care Sunday to really build and make our smoothie together. I hope you find this useful and I definitely want to know what smoothies you plan to make this week. And if you're looking for more help either with your nutrition or with your sleep, I just wanted to remind all of you that I do have those freebies in the first announcement at the top of the page to help you reinvent your snack drawer. So making sure you have easy, healthy, and delicious snacks around the house, especially if you're working from home or around the office, if you're um, working in an office. And then the sleep audio and meditation is amazing and helps you not only fall asleep, but stay asleep, which is so important. Thank you again for joining me for Self Care Sunday, and I can't wait to see and hear what kind of smoothies you're going to make this week. Talk to you later. See you next week.